Hi, my name's Mark Rutledge, one of the pastors here at Trillium United Church. I wanted to talk to you a bit about what we did in, in worship this, this morning. We talked a lot about the resurrection of Jesus, which is a pr pretty common thing to be talking about at this time of year with Easter just a week ago. I was thinking uh, a, 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 bit, a, a bit about uh, a time about maybe six, five, six years ago when I hadn't seen my stepdaughter for about six months. Unfortunately, in the separation, I found it harder and harder to get access to her to the point where I wasn't getting any access to her at all. And then all of a sudden, one day, I saw her stepping off a bus with her friend. And I looked at her, and she looked at me, and all of a sudden, in that moment, I realized that I was experiencing a resurrection moment. She had been dead to me. I didn't realize how deep that sense of death had gone inside of me, how even though I physically knew she was alive someplace, hadn't seen her, and all of a sudden, I recognized that I was experiencing a resurrection for myself. And it got me thinking immediately about what those first disciples must have experienced when they met the risen Jesus from the grave. They saw him stand in front of them, and they were experiencing something that really is so outside the normal experience of us in our day-to-day -day living that it, it transcends really any kind of structure or, or understanding. Uh, it's so easy for us to kind of blow past the Easter, Easter story, to, to, to let it just run past us and not, not to take it seriously or to kind of make it kind of a glib thing that we've heard so many times that it doesn't really move us in the way that I think it could. Or, or maybe turn it into a, a kind of metaphor for us about how you know, love is stronger than hate or life transcends death. But I think that it is important for us to really begin to ponder deeply about what kind of mystery, what kind of experience those first disciples may have had when they met the risen Jesus. I remember uh, reading a historian who went over the whole resurrection story reading a 200-page book about it. He went in a very objective and very careful manner over all the material. And at the very end of the book, he came to the conclusion that something must have happened Easter morning, but exactly what well, it was impossible to say. And after reading 200 pages of this fairly thick book, I'm thinking to myself, is that the best you can do? Come on, you can give us a little bit more than that. And I've been thinking about that uh, book for the last four or five years since I read it. And realizing that the historian was actually onto something, that there was a truth about what he was saying, that something did happen Easter morning, but exactly what happened and, and what it means for us is something that we still haven't yet come to get our heads around. Even the New Testament understands that it's dealing with different material here than it did in other parts of the life of Jesus. You know, the Gospel of Mark is 16 chapters long, and the last third is, is dealing with Jesus' last seven days of life. In fact, of those uh, six or seven chapters, the last four or five are dealing with the last day of Jesus' life and this slow motion of the Gospel up to the point of his crucifixion. But when Jesus is raised in the Gospel of Mark, there's eight verses. In fact, we don't even meet the risen Jesus in the Gospel of Mark. And if you look at the Gospel of Matthew, which is probably written a little bit later than Mark, we see 28 chapters in this, in this story of the life of Jesus. Chapter 28 deals with the resurrection. It's tiny. There's only a few little episodes about, about meeting Jesus in the resurrected state. In, in the Gospel of Luke, we have the story of, of the two disciples who meet Jesus on the way to Emmaus, and they don't recognize him. They don't see him. They don't understand who they're walking with. Only at the very end, when they share a meal with the stranger and this stranger breaks bread, are their eyes open and they recognize Jesus. When Jesus comes through the door to meet the disciples in the Gospel of Luke, he has to show them his wounded hands and his wounded feet to convince them that it, it really is him. It's, they don't recognize him for who he is. And, that's also true in the Gospel of John where Mary Magdalene in the garden weeping for the body of Jesus that had been taken away. He's, uh, he's in the garden, but she thinks he's the gardener and she's looking right at him. She's looking right at him, but she can't see him. It's only when he says or calls her by name, Mary, does she recognize who it is. And when he visits the disciples, he has to show them the wounds to convince them that it really is him. They, they don't seem to recognize him until they see the wounds in his hands and feet and in his side. And in chapter 21 of John, there is Jesus. He's out by the seashore calling out to the disciples who had gone back fishing. And they come to the shore to share a meal with him, but they don't seem to really get who it is that's with them. They don't recognize him. 
So if something's happened in the New Testament, they recognize the New Testament writers, they're dealing with material that's very different. Something has occurred in Jesus' resurrection that changes everything. And it's worthwhile for us to ponder the mystery of what happened on that Easter morning. Something happened. At Trillium, we've been uh, and are going to look at the uh, first letter of, of Paul to the Corinthian church, chapter 15, which is all about the resurrection. You know, Paul didn't actually put in chapters and verses. He wrote a letter to the, to the Corinthian church. We call it 1 Corinthians because there are two Corinthian letters written by him. And there's a section on the resurrection that Paul uh, uh, writes to the Corinthian church, talking about his thoughts about Jesus' resurrection and also about ours. And we're going to spend six weeks here at Trillium going over Paul's account of the resurrection and digging into what his insight is about the resurrection for us. I was mentioning in church today that, that uh, when I was a kid, I liked to skip rocks on ponds and lakes when I got a chance. I'd go down to the lake side or the pond side and look for the perfect rock to skip so I could see how many skims I could get across the water. I also liked dropping big rocks into water and watching the splash and the waves go out. The bigger the rock, the better. And as I got bigger into my teenage years, even into my early 20s, I loved picking up these big giant boulders and just tossing them into the water, seeing the splash and the wave going out. You know, when Jesus is resurrected, it's as if God drops a big, big rock into the water of life and the splash is made and all of a sudden the ripple goes out. And the early church takes this moment of the splash and it orientates everything around the resurrection. It looks backwards, trying to figure out who this Jesus is based on the resurrection. See, it wasn't obvious to them that he was who he said he was. A prophet, yes. A wise teacher, a good man, a great man even, yes. But Messiah? I don't think so. Son of God, Lord, I don't think the early church really understood exactly who he was. It's only by the resurrection itself that all of a sudden the blinders come off and they begin to understand Jesus in a new way. And, and, and prospectively forward too, uh, the ripple goes out to us and we are invited by the resurrection to rethink who we are. Paul talks in the opening part of 1 Corinthians 15 about reflecting about who we are as people. What are we about? Who are we really? In, in, in the second letter to the Corinthians, in chapter 5, Paul talks about how we're no longer to see Jesus from a human point of view anymore. We're to understand him now from a spiritual point of view and how we're to understand each other that way as well. How the new creation in the resurrection embraces us and we are part of a new order. and We're to understand ourselves in new ways, in different ways. And, in a sense, the mystery of Easter is now extended out to us. And we're invited to rethink who we are and what we're about and, and who God is and what God's about. So that resurrection life isn't just something that happened 2,000 years ago. It's something that happened for us today in this moment. We're called to wake up and to uh, pull ourselves out of that sleep that's taken over our lives. You see, in the Bible, sin is really about going to sleep. It's not about doing bad things or being a bad person. It's about, it's about being asleep to ourselves or, or having fallen asleep to become almost a state of amnesia. We forget who we are. And that big splash of the resurrection on Easter morning when all of a sudden all the assumptions about life are turned on their head and there the resurrected Jesus stands in front of the disciples and stands even now in front of us, that moment we are wakened up. The splash and all the ripples that go out from it wake us up. And I'd ask you, how are you doing with your own life? How's that, how's that awakening going for you? Are, you? are you coming awake out of the sleep of our everyday living? Are you waking up to who you are and what God has entrusted into your life and what God wants to move through you in, in a blessing to other people? Do you see people in that new Easter light, not seeing them anymore from a human point of view, but recognizing the divine face that stands before you in your spouse or your children or your, your neighbor or the, or the stranger you meet on the street? There goes the face of God. That's what resurrection is about. It's about awakening our consciousness and recognizing that we're more than just bodies. We're to see beyond the body into the essence of what and who we are. See our neighbors, not just as ourselves, but as the divine child of God who stands before us. And in the midst of all that, we discover the divine child that lurks deep within us.
So I invite you to continue your reflection about the mystery of Easter. Something got changed for Jesus. He wasn't just a resuscitated body. He was resurrected and the transformation was complete to the point that the disciples didn't really recognize him. And that's what God intends to do with us, to transform us, to transform our lives, to tr transform our hearts so that we are no longer recognizable to the world. But we are recognizable. We are recognizable to God and in truth to ourselves. That's the great news for today. Over the next five weeks, we're going to explore even in deeper ways the significance of resurrection for Jesus and for our lives. Thanks so much for listening. I'll, I'll see you next week. God bless.